Welcome back guys. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to make this beautiful jacket. So let's begin. I've already marked out my margins and I'll just go straight to my markings. So that's my shoulder drop and coming down, I looked for my armhole, then back to my shoulder line to find my bust point, my waistline and the full length. Now the full length, I took out 2 inches because there's a difference between the back and the front, which is 2 inches. So to get the actual length, I have to do that. So reducing my length to 23. Yes. So I'm squaring up my lines right here. So that's the, that's, this is the waistline now. And this is the full length. You can also call this your hip line. Okay. Now let me label them. This is my shoulder line, my armhole line, the waistline. I didn't label the bust line because it's not necessary for the back pattern, okay? So marking on the shoulder line is my shoulder measurement divided by two. I also took it down to the armhole line and also marked my bust measurement divided by four on that armhole line too. So the shoulder drop, we did one inch. I connected it down to the so the measurement I did on the armhole line, then on that line I looked for the midpoint, then came in by one quarter of an inch. This will help me to find my armhole curve. So you're connecting your shoulder drop, the um, one quarter inch you came in, then to your bust measurement divided by four. So for the neckline we are using the depth of one one quarter, or you can make it one inch, you can make it one and a half. Then the length is three inches, so I just connected like so, and this is the shoulder drop. Now your bust measurement, you're going to take it down to the waistline. So whatever your bust measurement is, mark it on the waistline. Then on the length, which is the hip line, you're going to mark the hip measurement divided by four. Then connect the three points. So hip to waist, waist to armhole. Now we want to look for our um, waist measurement here, which is seven. Then I took out the difference, which is one and a half. I, I bear that in mind because I have to look for my dart point line, which is the bust span of three and a half inches, which I just marked here. So that difference now is what we're going to use as our dart. Now, I'm going to take a dart on the bust pan measurement and on the center back, okay, to create the curve for the back. So, I've marked half inch on the center back, then one inch on the bust that line. That's the waist that line, rather. Then connect the points, as you can see, okay? So, I'm going to also connect the other points to create the dart intake for the center back. So this um, jacket do not need a zipper allowance. So you can see I didn't do anything like that for this. So on the side, we're going to come down or go up rather by half inch and connect it down to have that on smooth curve by the edge, by the side. So you can decide to leave this pattern like so, the way it is right here, or you can connect to create a shoulder line um that or the princess style line that's the armhole princess style line on the armhole so i'm doing the armhole princess style line i just came down by the half that's the middle of my armhole then connect it to the armhole line okay so this is our back so that's the back if i was too fast i am so sorry you can always pause and play the video to understand more so for the front we need an extension you can see what i'm trying to describe we need more space for the front yes because we're creating the lapel and the collar together with our pattern so to begin i need to uh, mark out my points okay i need to mark out the area that i want to work with so that's what i'm trying to do i've marked out the length area which is 25 inches which is the length of the jacket 
so if you, if you remember our back was 23 right so the difference between the front and the back is 2 inches and that's why it was 23 so now let me try and mark my points so I'm going to mark my armhole point the bust point the waistline point and that's the full length we already marked that so I'll repeat that so I can have a straight line so that's the armhole line that's the bust line now the waistline has um, gone up, gone out of line because of the difference between the back and the front so you can see that there so now I'm trying to create a demarcating line between the front and the back okay so it's nothing serious I'm just trying to have a straight line so that my um, pattern will be accurate okay I'm supposed to use a red pen to draw that so that there will be a difference okay okay so I still need to find my center back because that's the side we just um, looked for I need to find the area where I will begin my measurements okay so that that's what I'm trying to do it's nothing serious so what I just did is I used my hip measurement divided by four so that I won't run short of um, paper so that's what I just used to um, create the line that's the yeah the line for the center front where my markings will begin so that's my center front now so now that I have my square I have peace of mind now so let's start so the first point to mark is my shoulder divided by two I marked it on the shoulder line and on the armhole line so I squared up this line yeah that's after coming down by one inch for the shoulder drop I squared it up then look for the midpoint came in by half inch okay you know the front we came by one quarter but this one is by half inch then I just remember that I didn't label okay then I marked my bust measurement divided by four also on the armhole line because that's a point that will connect my armhole core if you can see that okay so for the neck I came down by three and a half inches for the length then the width um, is three inches same as the back so that the shoulder lines will match up when you sew so I'm connecting my curve now for the neckline then that's my shoulder drop so at this point we're done with that upper area let's um, let's work on the lower part so this is me telling you that that line is not my main line it's just my demarcating line so uh, I'm going to take my bust measurement, I'll mark it on the bust line and on the waist line. We already have our hip measurement on the hip line. So I'll square up this to that, then square this up to the waist line to have my, um, my body shape there. So that's me using my red pen to say this, this is my demarcating line, okay? It's nothing serious. So I am looking for my waist measurement there divided by four. So after doing that, I I have to look for my bust pan first okay before working with that measurement so the bust pan I marked it on the bust line the waistline and on our full length line that's our hip line so you can see I stopped on the bust line for the front meanwhile the back we stopped on the armhole line you can see that then on the waistline now that difference between the bus divided by four and the waist divided by four we're going to put it all in to our waistline for our darts now if you're working without cutting through your pattern you have to come down by one inch to connect your dart to the bus point but i'm cutting through that's why i marked all the way to my bus point like you can see okay so that difference between the front and the back now we're going to use it as our side dart intake and that's it i just did two inches and i connected it all the way to the bust point like so so this is like a basic pattern we have here already so let's work on our extension and our lapel and our collar also 
okay so now this is me marking the button extension now for any dress that has an opening in front you must have a button extension so I did a button extension of one inch you can go as far as one and a half or two inches depends on what you want to get so that's it button extension okay so after the button extension we are also going to add the, the break point we're going to mark the break point the break point is where your button usually stays the button for the jacket okay so that's where the collar also will end that's the the lapel a lapel i don't know what to pronounce but that's where it ends okay but before we do that i need to extend the area that's the shoulder line area i need to add more paper so that i can be able to draft the collar okay so that i have a space to draft my collar so that's what i'm doing here Remember guys, if you're just coming here for the first time, kindly subscribe. And those of you that have been here, I say thank you. Remember to like this video, you can share and turn on the notifications so you always get notified anytime I upload a new video. So for the break point, I'm working with two inches above the waistline, okay? You can go as far as three inches or you can go lower or it can be on your waistline, depends on what you want. So that point, you connect it to the neckline at that point, but you have to come in by one quarter of an inch before connecting so, I, so that you have this blend outline like so. So still on that line, okay, just, um, I just set my ruler aside. I'm still going to put it back. I'm going to measure my back neckline because I want to include my collar to that line now. So I'm placing my ruler back. Then from the point I stopped earlier, I'm going to mark three and a half inches, which I just measured from my back neckline, okay? So I extended the line by three and a half inches. Now, let me give you guys an eagle view. Yes, like this. So, so you, I want you to see this clearer. So I try to place the camera this way. So we're going to um, extend the line to create a lapel. Okay. So I just want to blend out that neckline, same um, bend, something like so. So I'm marking one and a half inches. You can mark two inches. You can mark one inch. Depend on what you want or how want how wide you want your lapel to be. Okay. So you can connect with the straight line. You can connect with the curve line. Um, the way I'm doing down to your break point. Okay. Then connect this back to the neckline like so. So you can decide to slant your lapel upward or downward whichever is your choice but let's come to the collar area so for the collar you can go as much as four inches three and a half or three inches but i work with four inches here so from that extended line we did that three and a half inches we did before i marked four inches okay so after marking the four inches i really need to get that three and a half inches to be equal on that marking so i place my ruler to be parallel with my shoulder slant then mark that three and a half you see that three and a half right so i'll have a squared up line so on that point i mark the three and a half so i have a squared up line at that point then connected it back to that one we marked earlier okay you can see that so from that point now i'll connect down to the lapel area now for the lapel i want to have a notch so i just did the uh, one quarter one quarter and the notch is just one inch um wide so that's just basically the notch i just created so with a slant curve not uh, too much curve i connected that notch back to the 
line we created earlier so this point now this area everything you can see how it blended out this is our color and that's our lapel and at this point we are done with that area so i want to have a princess style line like i i told you guys earlier when we were doing the back so for the front the same thing i just connected it straight to my armhole um measurement divided by by two and i have my princess style line there so now i'm taking up the side to have a slant okay so I connect that and we're going to cut that out later okay so guys before cutting don't cut yet we need to true our pattern so to true my dart i need to true my dart rather to true my dart i need the lines to be equal so whatever i measured for this lower line that the line for uh, that we marked for the two inches to create the dart i'm going to mark it on the upper line so that they will be equal so this is the truing of my dart so i'll connect it back to the line and connect it back to my armhole line and you have something like that so before i cut so this will enable me to have equal um lines when i'm cutting now i need to close the boss that very very important but to close a that you need to open another so i opened my armhole that like so okay then so that i can close my side that like that very simple so i just want to apply an adhesive so to just be very easy for me to work with so i close it that's it so i basically transferred my bust dart to the armhole so now the dart is on the armhole so i continue the cutting so i also need to true this point yeah so it's the same thing with what we did earlier so just uh, measure the the lines whichever one that is um that is more than the other okay make sure the one that is short of it has its own complete that's just basically the aspect of our train and here it's mine is really not significant it's just one quarter of an inch shorter so that's what i did i just connected back to the armhole and that's it you can see just a little bit something there so I'm going to continue the cutting, okay, and just watch me as I do the cutting. It's very, very easy to do. So I'm cutting through now. That's the break point up to the lapel and cutting to the collar area. And see that and removing my notch and cutting through the other part of the collar and that's it and that's a shoulder slant so we still have the dart that's the waist dart okay and cutting it out now this is what we have okay so we succeeded in creating the pattern for the front that's the front, this is the side front, and that's the collar. Okay, by the time you're done sewing, you'll be having something like this. So you're having the lapel and that's the collar attached to it. You can see the notch already um, showing itself there. Okay, let's not forget that we have the back. <laughs> so let's cut the back. So basically the same thing we did for the front just cut it out the areas that we canceled will be cut out and that's the center back yeah so cutting through the darts and up to our armhole princess tie line then the sides then through the armhole 
and the shoulder slants then the neck okay so that's a side back you need to do the labeling so you don't get confused so i noticed my my bust point area is a little bit pointed i just blended that out like so and that's it guys we are done with the front and the back so let's see how to go about the sleeves so for the sleeve i have already folded my fabric yes we are marking directly on the fabric and this is my margin where i will start from and i'm taking the bicep of five inches then i squared that up then the length we're working with is 24 inches then i squared that up also now i measured my armhole and i got eight inches so this eight inches is what i'm taking and the remaining will be used for my seam allowance so but placing the fabric on fold what you have is seven but when you place it on slant like so you have eight okay now we're going to divide that eight by three into three yeah and i'm going to take note of the um, crease on my tape I'll take note of the creasing on my tape like so then place it on that slant and mark okay just mark the points that creased and you can square up the line like I did the first line you come down by quarter of an inch and the other one you come up by half inch or three quarter of an inch then connect them like this yeah is that simple so when you measure that you're going to get what you have on your armhole okay that's it so this is the same allowance and now I need to get my um my mid my elbow point yeah so the elbow point I measured and I got it then input my elbow measurement value by two but you know this is a jacket sleeve so you need you need an uh you need ease okay you need a lot of ease so I just mark the normal measurement there so for the wrist you need to measure the way i'm doing right here so that the dress can go through okay so that the sleeve can pass through your hands so whatever you've got for my client i i already measured them then i divided by two and added, added my seam allowance so make sure you add seam allowance if you're marking directly on fabric anytime any day very very important Make sure you add seam allowance okay so i'm going to add seam allowance at the wrist area i just did that broken line to indicate that there's a seam allowance there okay so i'm adding there at the wrist area and that's it yeah we're cutting so this is just i don't know it's just like the simplest method i've developed by myself on cutting sleeves and it always works for me so that's the sleeve and guys we are done so I placed on my fabric I placed my pattern on fabric and this is what we have remember to add seam allowances okay very important and here is our jacket okay this is a jacket, it's an inseam finishing jacket. Okay, and this is the inside. You can see how clean and so beautiful it turned out to be. And that's the sleeve area. So this is the picture, and I made a palazzo to go with this. This is it, with a camisole, yeah. So the camisole is two-way, as you can see. This is the second one. So um, this is our palazzo. I just pinned it on the mannequin because the mannequin is way bigger. And this is our outfit, guys. So beautiful. Thank you so much for being with me in this video. I hope to see you in the next video and I hope you learned a lot. Bye-bye.